we were allowed to read only two magazines. And these were Inkubela and Tselopi. <laughs> the reasons are obvious. Well, because we had nothing else to do, we had to go through them with a fine comb. And in the process, we used to be very delighted to see two or three young men, women amongst a multitude of African graduates. But I'm almost certain that you will agree with me that that position has changed. I've been watching the proceedings since I came in here, and I can safely say that the situation is dominated by the members of the fair sex. I have no problem with this, more so that we are promoting and preaching a non-sexist South Africa. But my worry is that the scale is so tilted towards the other end that we might reach a stage where we will have to say we are no longer observing a non-sexist South Africa. I hope those of my sex are cognizant of this fact. I indicated earlier that I would like to respond make brief responses to two issues that we learned about from the media last night. One, it is said that Constant Phil June has a letter from Comrade Mandela granting them the full start. Secondly, we are also told that some high-ranking security men in the name of Bassi, Smith, Leroux, and Engelbrecht have been suspended. And if this is true, then PAC has been vindicated. Because all along, we have maintained and we still maintain that the regime is responsible for the carnage that is going on in our country. We are saying this simply because these men, together with F.W. de Klerk, are members of the state security of which he is chairman. If it is true that they were responsible for supplying arms to certain individuals in the country, then we have a problem. Moving on to the question of the false start, PAC has no problem as far as the false start is concerned. We have made our position clear in the past and that position still holds good even today, and that is we would never be a party to the balkanization or bandustanization of our country. <laughs> Having said that, I would like to add that we are prepared to meet the members of the false start. In fact, we are going to meet them. 
But before we even meet them, we would like them to prepare to answer two questions. The third one emanates from these two. The first one is, where are the boundaries of this false start? They have been dodging this question for quite long, deliberately, because they know immediately they tell the world, and this, we want them to do it publicly, not behind closed doors, that the false start will start from this river to that river or from that mountain to that mountain, and immediately they do so. They are going to lose a big portion of their following. That is why they are avoiding this this question. Now, if they are able, therefore, to do so, to indicate to us the boundaries, the next question is, what is going to happen to the people who are already inside that area who happen not to be Afrikaners? If they say they are prepared to live with them equally, or if they say to live with them equally, then there is another problem because it would not be only PAC that is going to quarrel with that position, but the entire world will be opposed to that idea. But if they say they are prepared to live with them on an equal basis, then we ask them the third question, why can't you live with everybody equally wherever you are?